the singularity. The ever accelerating progress of technology. What happens when the ability to predict even the near future stops, and the future capacities of humans and machines alike becomes an unknown? Welcome to the 10th episode of the Random Review Show. Now, have you ever stopped to consider how amazing it is the footage of me is reaching you now? That a pretty small device can take in light, store it in electrical form, manipulate it, and eventually put it on a card about this big? A few decades ago, I'd have used a similar camera, but it would have stored on magnetic tape instead. And before that, I'd have been forced to use a real film camera. And before that, well, I'd have had to sketch things really quickly. Now, would the earliest film pioneers have imagined our progress in camera technology? Or for that matter, our progress on what can be put to film? And in essence, this is what Singularity is about. The progress of technology becoming so fast, you can't predict where it will lead. At least that's one definition. The other definition is... Hey, have you seen this? I mean the mysterious shadow from the mysterious object that 3D printed when I hooked up my mysterious robotic arm up to my computer in order to figure out how I was being followed when I had to go on the run a few episodes back? Well, it seems to be a postcode and a picture of a bottle. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, the singularity. In essence, it's about the ever-increasing speed of technology developments, so that the future of human life will be unrecognisable to what it is today. At least that's the idea. Well, I'm going to look it up on my phone. The effects of technology on our lives are pretty obvious. We get quicker and quicker access to information these days. Seems to be quite close to us. A local supermarket. We've access to data in seconds what would have been unthinkable in the past. Zooming in on the satellite map, I can see both an off-license and a bottle bank nearby. I think we should check them both out. Nah, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the off-license. In essence, technology enhances our abilities. We can do more with less effort, be it mentally or physically. There's a bus we can take, leaving in about five minutes. About the only thing technology doesn't enhance is our ability to make decisions, to prioritise one choice over another. You're taking that? The camera? I was going to review as I went. You, you're doing a review? Now? Seriously? Why not? Because you seem to be getting rather obsessed with reviewing things. I mean, think about that public toilet the other day. Did it really need a review? I don't understand. Ah, whatever. Come on, if we hurry up, we can get to our destination during the title sequence. Come on, evil clone! Twin! It, it's twin and... Oh, whatever. I think it's inside the bottle bank. Ow! Yeah, that's the one. We need a control. They might all make that noise. And a bigger sample range. Ow! Ow! Ah! Okay, that's enough. Who's in here anyway? Oh 
it's just me. Is it you? Yeah, it's you. Oh my god, it's my clone! She's with the evil mastermind behind everything! No, no, it can't be her. Look, she's not wearing a hat. The, the hat does come off, you know? You could just ask, you know. I am you. From the future! So it can be you. She's standing over there! No! No, I'm not your evil clone! But twin! Twin! But who? Oh, why do I even bother? If she hasn't done it by the time that time travel got invented, then what, what's the point? I'm you! From the future! So in the future I become a scientist. Evil. You become evil. That's true. I am evil. But I'm also a ninja. A scientist and a ninja. Awesome. Dude, evil. Meh. Yeah. So what cool stuff do we have in the future? Not much. Except invisible shrikens. Awesome. She kidnapped me! Wait, did you say future? I'm doing an episode on the singularity. Yes, I, I know, I was there. But I wasn't really paying any attention. Ow! Uh, so that's how I got a scar. Anyway, doesn't matter. I knew you were coming, so I planned the two of you to guest star in my lecture. Lectures? Yes, I have a web show. Anyone watching that? Uh... Uh. Welcome, students from the Academy of Evil Science. Today, we're going to take a look at how 21st century people observe the future. But I was going to talk about the singularity. <laughs> Singularity. Yeah. Now, the best way to predict the future is to look at past trends, and the singularity is an idea based on those trends. Let's take transportation. So we're really doing this? A review? Now? Let's take transportation. Now, around 4000 BC, all we had was horses and cars, and for thousands and thousands and thousands of years since, not much changed. Paved roads and spoked wheels improved comfort, but the average speed of humans remained about 20 miles an hour. In fact, it wasn't until the 1800s which things really started changing. The invention of the steam engine, and along with it the steam boat and the steam train and the push bike, increased our ability to move automatically. And in the 1900s things really took off. The Model T car, the first powered flight, the jet engine, and shortly after that, space travel. Now, you may quibble about a few points on this graph, but the shape's pretty clear cut. The development in the last 150 years has been so rapid, it can barely be contained on a linear scale. Ah, oh, fine. Let me see that graph. It's not really a good representation, is it? I mean, the spacecraft haven't gone any better. Our practical transportation hasn't gone any quicker. Heck, since the Concorde, we've gone slower. Actually, in the next decade or so, Spaceship 2 may take us from London to Sydney in four hours. But it'll be a while till that's cheap enough for everyone. Yeah, and cars aren't going any faster because we can't make them faster. They're not going faster because it's not practical to make them faster. Yeah, going Mach 1 down the highway sounds really fun, but it would have a whole range of problems. Like insects on your windscreen. So instead, cars are made cheaper, safer and more efficient. Sure, but especially those have even bigger limitations. Take the efficiency. We're actually putting a lot of effort into making things more and more efficient, but we're getting less and less in return. Eventually we get to some sort of physical limitation of the whole thing. The SD card is a good example, uh, and likewise the microchip, because eventually we get so small that the electricity literally starts jumping the circuits. It literally becomes impossible to make it any smaller. 
Ha! But then something interesting happens. Every time we start to push up against a technological limitation, we find a new method of doing the same thing. With computers, we're switching to quantum circuits. With cars, we're switching to electric engines. Progress doesn't stop, it changes. And it's these big technological leaps that are important to our society, not the incremental ones. Generally speaking, every time something's proved possible by one person, other people find new ways of doing the same thing, better. Let's take the TV. The first TV was a big spinning wheel. But then shortly after that, the cafe ray tube was invented, and a few decades after that, the LCD screens. Each one basically doing the same end result, but doing it in completely different methods, and each one much better than before. One example in progress is our 3D printer. It's pretty new tech, but in some ways it's like the big spinning wheel of TV compared to what's coming now. This is the PC printer. It doesn't look like much, it's in fact more or less a pair of headphones, some mirrors and a laser, but it's a 3D printer. A radically new way of doing the same thing. It's got no moving parts, it's vastly cheaper, and it's a bit quicker. Still, we're only looking at a very narrow range of things. What about the things that affect our lives in a much bigger sense? The singularity is supposed to be life affecting, changing the very nature of human experience itself. Like washing your hands. Huh? Germ theory. Just 150 years or so ago, we had no clue that tiny organisms were responsible for so many diseases. We had no idea why we should wash our hands. In fact, we had no idea why hospitals at the time were killing more people than they were curing. Merely getting doctors to wash their hands saved countless lives. And look at what we've achieved since then. Antibiotics, vaccinations, anesthesia, x-rays, CTs, ultrasounds, MRIs, DNA sequencing. We have come so far in such a short time in the area that affects us our most, our very lives. Whoa, no need to be so dramatic about it. Or communication. The printing press, the telegraph, the telephone, the TV, radios, mobile phones, the internet. We can pull up any bit of information we want, whenever we want. And for that matter, we can communicate with our friends and family wherever they are in the world. Surely this has profoundly changed our social lives. Okay, fair enough. Those have been quite big leaps. But Singularity states that these progressions will just continue, even increase in speed. And I'm not so sure about that. Why wouldn't it continue? Because maybe de facto driving innovation stop. We can't know whether the speed of development will continue if we don't know why humanity has advanced so much in the last 150 years. And if the underlying causes of our technological progression are not known, then maybe the next 100 years will look exactly the same. Perhaps a few changes, but not much. Oh, well, there is a zombie outbreak in about five years. Um, should you even tell us about that? It might affect the timeline. Oh no! Are you saying that by telling you not to eat Tim's brand of all-natural sausages, which will be on the market in about two years, and overtaking the world by storm, but actually made of BSE cows and the coronavirus, you could put a stop to it and potentially affect the future and thus saving millions of lives? Either that didn't really affect my plans, or you're the laziest and most irresponsible asshole I've ever met. Hey, I've got important reviewing to do. Besides, why didn't you do anything about it? Hello? Evil? It's not just technological inventions that had influence on our innovations. Think about healthcare, uh, social justice, education. These things probably had just as much impact on the rate of our progress. Think about it. How many scientists have we probably lost due to polio? A disease we've almost entirely eradicated. You might not think about it, because it doesn't look like a gadget or something you can touch or something you can see, but vaccinations have brought a huge advancement in the amount of people that we actually have. Unfortunately, basically because we don't feel the effect of an absence of something, we don't appreciate it. So, how many more people will we get? How many more innovators have we gained by trying to abolish racism? 
how many more people will we get by trying to give developing nations a good chance? Yes, but isn't the biggest driver of those social changes technology? For example, literacy. Surely that's gone up hugely thanks to the availability of cheap books. And that was down to the printing press. After the printing press, the number of books went up exponentially. 80% of the world can now read. Over 2 million books are published every single year. And best of all, over 99% of them are not written by Stephanie Myers. More knowledge and ideas are being shared by more people than ever before, ultimately thanks to that one invention. Then I'd say Bricatalyst for one another. Your example of the printing press is good, but what if people were just forbidden to read? They, uh, social changes influence technological changes and vice versa. One interesting example I have is what well, one we're experiencing right now on this continent. There has been a huge uptake in solar panels. Imagine 15 years ago you tell your friends that you're planning on generating your own electricity with solar panels, <laughs> they'd call you crazy. I mean, still we find it curious, but not insane. And that's because a few things changed in the last 15 years. Solar panels are now far more efficient and the increased production made them cheaper as well. Electricity will become more in demand and demand drives prices. We, as a society, have started to consider sustainable energy as a good way to capture the increase of demand. Gas is clean, but very finite. Oil is damaging and also finite. And nuclear energy is great, except when it's not. Solar panels have also become really convenient pieces of technology. They are easy to install and integrate with your home electricity system. So would the solar panel revolution still have happened without either of those four? Probably. But at this speed? Absolutely not. There are many other examples of this techno-social synergy. Unfortunately, there are also plenty of examples of technology halted by social pressure. We still don't have male chemical contraceptives because of the distrust of said chemicals. The Concord failed because sonic booms are prohibited over land masses. Artificial diamonds are halted by the jewelry industry. LSD and MDMA research is still outlawed in many countries, despite evidence for mental health uses. Ah, uh, and then we get wine. Screw the wine bottles. We irrationally worship the cork. And there's nothing wrong with packed wine, people! Hey, that reminds me. Why did you build your secret lab inside a bottle bank? I have to work here. Mad science isn't cheap, you know. Same reason why I have to do these lectures, in fact. Now wrap it up already. I have evil to attend to. So it seems technological development is very much linked to actual development in society. Conditions have to be right for technological progression to prosper. But when it is, we can go from germ theory to DNA sequencing in just 150 years. Or from 30 miles per hour to 30,000 miles per hour in 50 years. So the singularity might occur, but only if conditions are right. If society stays stable, healthy, and literate enough for new ideas to flourish. So we finished our review. Unless you have anything to add? Not much. Except that you foolishly forgotten to mention the other definition of the singularity. The one where the increasing development of an artificial intelligence eventually results in one that can be humans. That it will develop itself faster than humans can keep up and thus it becomes the dominant life form. I think it's nonsense. Nonsense? <laughs> yeah, that was totally nonsense. All they do is play video games all day. <coughs> Stop playing Candy Crush! You were supposed to be done with my taxes days ago! Anyway, I guess that wraps up this week's lesson. As you can see, our ancestors had no idea what was coming. Next week, we're going to look at classical cinema. Specifically, the feministic qualities of Zack Snyder's work. Hey, but my conclusion. We couldn't have done a conclusion anyway. We don't know how unpredictable the future is. Hello? Time traveler? 
right here. Oh, so what really did happen? You think I will tell you? Ha! Oh, go on. Oh, all right then. You know when two pathogens meet, they can influence each other and mutate into an even worse thing? Turns out the same thing can happen to internet arguments. So when the ninja versus pirates argument met the scientist versus creationist argument, it combined and mutated into something far sinister, causing a global everlasting war. So what you're saying is... In the future, you're either a ninja scientist or a creationist pirate. Of course, the war was mostly their fault. They failed to listen to reason. They say we were playing God. Well, on reflection, perhaps we shouldn't have built the giant inflatable omniscient computer in the sky. And I guess the beard was also a bit too much. No offense, but this sounds utterly insane. How do I know you're not just completely stark raving mad? I do have a science degree, you know? Seems legit to me. I mean, it even has a shiny bit. So what you're saying is, in the future, everyone's either a ninja scientist or a pirate creationist. Yes. Everyone? All 10 billion or so inhabitants? Yes. <sighs> Fine. Even if all of this was true, what are you doing here? Ha! Allow me to explain! Huh? What? I know myself. Once I start monologuing, I don't stop. Haven't you noticed that during the review? But even the Great Wars have their downsides. Although I quite like evil, and science, and being a ninja, I don't like having to rebuild my lab every few weeks because of a pirate invasion. So utilizing the newly discovered spring theory... Spring theory? Annulating reality itself down to its very foundation... Yeah, everything is made of his thinkies. ...created a virtual brain. Huh? How on earth do you know that? Capable of writing many fanfics at the same time. Isn't it obvious? Aptly avoiding rationality... I decided to take over the world! And you... Thomas, were the perfect candidates. Uniquely addicted to reviewing stuff. Copying your mind would enable me to control the future! So, right. You needed my emotions to create a copy of my brain. But why? Ah, simple. In 2034, a scientist discovered that only a limited number of opinions can exist at any given area. By you reviewing everything, you use up all the opinions, becoming somewhat of an opinion vortex, and thereby taking away other people's capacity to have them. And when people have no opinions anymore, they can't act out on those opinions. No more arguing, no more fighting, I'd be creating world peace! But that wouldn't be world peace, that would be worldwide total enslavement. Not really, we still have AIs. And they'll be happy until they run over to video games. But hopefully by that time I can give people back their opinion power. And in the meantime, at least no one's dying of a giant internet debate that got out of control. Yeah, but it's still kinda lame. Yeah, who'd come up with such a stupid scheme? Hold on! If I vow not to participate with this, you'll never do this. Yeah, but considering we're still here, you're... I'm still gonna do it anyway. Good point. I may as well not try. Good! And now, Thomas, this is the moment that you will join me in my quest. And you will do so... voluntarily. <laughs> Why on earth would I do such a thing? You will join me because you owe me. Come
President Gobert's Oscar chances later. Meanwhile, thousands have died after an unprovoked attack on our invading forces. Before coming back to your time, I witnessed a great battle. A battle where you were gravely injured. That's when I came up with my genius plan. I would ensure your arm was injured in the past. I would tempt you into getting a robotic replacement. I then ensure to experience all the emotions. Fear. Paranoia. Joy. Recorded and stored onto my plot device. You think your life was just this crazy by chance? It took a lot of work to make the plot of your life this convoluted. Anyway, you see, while the future battle will still happen as depicted, you will only suffer a robotic dismemberment in the heat of battle. A much less worse fate. So you see, you will owe me. Uh, that was my left arm? Huh? That was my left arm that got sliced off? Ow. You gave me a robotic right arm? Whoops. Also, how comes you've got this robotic arm right there? Ah, you see, that was the other genius part of my plan. I programmed his robotic arm to jump through a time portal immediately after it leaves the body. Thus, I have all the information it has gathered. It knows every location you have been to between now and then. Every emotional state you have been in, it's a record of your whole future life. So that's how she followed you. So what you're saying is, in the future, when my real arm gets chopped off, my robotic right arm runs away from me, leaving me alone, in great pain, in the middle of a war zone, unarmed, and you expect me to join you. I might not have thought this all through. Still, I have you all captured. You can do nothing to stop my master plan. You can't kill me. If you kill me, it will change the timeline. Good point. However... gonna do shoot yourself yes I remember being that much of a bastard <laughs> Ow, that hurt. I am so going to shoot myself the first chance I get it's over you too are helpless I already have ensured all of your emotions are stored ahead of schedule. Nothing will stop me from ruling the world. <laughs> you, s you say you've got all my emotions, but I haven't been confused lately. I just don't get it. I lied. I still needed that one. Great, you. Anger, check. I can't believe I'm this stupid. Ha, ah, self-loving. Check. For goodness sake, Tom, stop responding to her. Obedience as well. Perfect. That's not an emotion. I'm from the future. Our psychology is far beyond your comprehension. You have caveman psychology compared to us. You can't even comprehend how we comprehend your lack of comprehension! <laughs> exactly. With the blood.
plot device in my hands, I can return to the future and recreate the Earth in my image. No one can stop me. No one! <laughs> ah, mommy! No, it's me. I'm you, from the future. You're me, from the future? He means me. Oh, that makes much more sense. As much as anything right now makes sense. Ah, it all makes perfect sense. Allow me to explain. So in your future, the battle had moved on, but not before my arm was lost. I was left in the corner, alone, dying, and I knew just a few seconds remained before I lose my other arm. However, I knew this would happen, so I prepared. I tracked the robotic arm as it left, as it summoned a wormhole to bring it back to the mad scientist. Using science, I summoned the wormhole towards me. I then simply calmly waited until it had engulfed me, bringing me back in time to your present day. Still injured, I quickly found some medical supplies and wrapped myself up. I then hid in the cupboards of her lab, remaining undetected, sustaining myself on cereal packets and pretending to be rodents. I thought those droppings were a bit big. Then I simply came out of the upper cupboard and fell down on her, just now. But I don't understand why I embedded the coordinates to this place in a 3D printed object rather than merely putting them on your screen. Well, that was because I needed them not to be noticeable from your evil future of self when she was hex editing the robotic arm before she gave it to me. No, I meant why are you wearing bandages on your head? Oh, that's just a fashion in my time. Hey, where did she go? Damn it! She must have escaped while we were talking. You caught her? Gone back to the future with future Tom, you say? Oh well. Hey, if you're there anyway, could you bring some milk along? And not a red alcoholy type, it really doesn't go with my porridge. You. So we found out what was happening, we wrapped up all our plot threads and defeated the ultimate evil, um, you. Well, at least we saw our future. Yes. And that the amazing things we're experiencing right now might not necessarily continue. Or if they do, they may just lead to dumb wars. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try our hardest to make it continue. To look at the things that are driving the changes. The things that make society go forward rather than back. Education, assured survival, equal opportunities, spreading knowledge. So regardless of if or when a singularity occurs, we should continue to push forward the things in society that themselves push progress forward. Oh yeah, absolutely, because it turns out that these elements give happiness and prosperity to all of us, whether it will lead to singularity or not. So overall, I give the singularity about 8 out of 10. All post-industrial revolution societies should try it. What, seriously? You're, you're, you're still doing this? A review? Well, yeah, this was a review show.
finally, we are still in a global everlasting war. <sighs> I guess I'll go and do something about that. Oh, hi, evil clone.